Hey everyone, and welcome to Zabbix series. In the second basic concepts video, we will learn how to use Zabbix low level discovery to automatically discover items, triggers, and other Zabbix entities for our resources. So let's get started and switch to our front end. Low level discovery rules, also abbreviated as LLDs, are used to automatically discover and create Zabbix entities to monitor different types of metrics, from file systems and network interfaces to containers, database tables, virtual machines, and pretty much anything else. Before we dive deeper into how LLDs discover these entities, let's take a surface level look at an LLD. First, let's find a Zabbix template with an LLD that utilizes Zabbix agent to discover entities such as items, triggers, graphs, and more. If we open the official network interfaces by Zabbix agent template, we can see that the template lacks any items or triggers on it. Instead, it utilizes a single network interface discovery LLD rule to create items and triggers from the prototypes. Let's open the discovery rule and look at its configuration parameters. The configuration looks very similar to how we configure a regular item. Just like a regular item, the discovery rule has a type, Zabbix agent, as well as a key. Almost any item type can be used for an LLD. In case of the Zabbix agent, the agent is aware of a set of a discovery keys and using them tells the agent to discover a specific set of metrics. For more advanced low-level discovery, we can use other item types, such as Zabbix trapper if we wish to send our LLD data via Zabbix sender, or a dependent item type, if we wish to collect the LLD data from a master item. We will take a detailed look at how LLD data should be formatted later in this video. The LLD also has an update interval. The update interval specifies how often the discovery rule gets executed to discover new and remove lost resources, for example, network interfaces. Finally, keep lost resources period specifies how long do we keep items, triggers, graphs, and hosts related to a resource that is no longer available. Let's look at the top of this page. We can see that the discovery rule contains a set of prototypes for items, triggers, graphs, and hosts. Think of these prototypes as blueprints from which items, triggers, graphs, and hosts will be created based on the discovered resource. Let's click on the item prototypes section and look at some of the item prototypes for the network interface discovery rule. We can see item prototypes that can be used to collect metrics such as incoming and outgoing traffic, interface type and speed, error and discarded packets, and more. Let's open the incoming traffic item and look at how it's configured. On the surface, this looks just like a regular Zabbix agent item. It has the same set of parameters, a name, a key, an update interval, pre-processing rules, tags, and units. One difference that you may have already noticed is the use of the so-called LLD macros in the name and the key. Similar to user macros, LLD macros will always be written in uppercase letters and will be defined between curly brackets. Instead of having a dollar sign in front of the macro name, LLD macros will begin with the hash symbol. For every discovered resource, the LLD macro will be replaced with the LLD macro value for said resource. In our case, it will be replaced with the name of the interface. Depending on the particular LLD rule, either a single LLD macro or multiple LLD macros can be discovered. Any of the discovered macros can be used in item name, key, or tags. Now let's apply this template on a host and see what resources we can discover and how they look like. We can either wait for the rule to be executed by Zabbix or use the execute now button to execute it on demand, similar to how it can be done with a regular item. Once the discovery rule is executed, we will see that our number of items and triggers has increased. If we look at the items, we will see that nine items have been created for each of our interfaces, one per item prototype, 18 in total. If we look at the item names and keys, we will notice that the LLD macro has been replaced with the name of the discovered interface. Next, let's look at how LLD macros are obtained by an LLD rule. For our simple example, 
we can see that the net if discovery rule collects a list of discovered resources paired with LLD macros. All of this is collected in JSON format. Once the data is collected, an entity is created from each prototype per the discovered resource. More complex rules, such as file system discovery, discover multiple LLD macros per the discovered resource. Here we can see that in addition to the file system name, the LLD rule also discovers the file system type. These LLD macros can then be used to create item, trigger, graph, and host prototypes. For example, the FS name macro can be used in the item prototype key parameters, while the FS type macro can provide additional information in the item name, description, tags, or can be used to filter out resources on the discovery rule level. LLD filters are defined in the filters section of a low-level discovery rule. Filters can be used to filter out any unwanted resources. These resources will then be ignored by the discovery rule and no Zabbix entities will be created for them from the LLD prototypes. We can use AND or logic combined with matches, does not match, as well as exists, does not exist expressions to filter out resources based on the values of low-level discovery macros. Regular expressions are used to match the values of the discovered LLD macros. In case of the network discovery, Filters are used to filter out the loopback interface, but anything else can be filtered out this way. File systems based on their name or type, database tables, containers, and any other type of resource. If you wish to learn more about low-level discovery and how it can be used to discover different types of resources, I recommend signing up for our Zabbix Certified Professional Training. During the training, you will get the chance to practice defining your own LLD rules by using many of the available item types, use LLD filters and overrides, learn how to optimize your LLD by using the dependent item type for your LLD rules, and many other LLD features. Now it's time for you to try and discover some resources in your own environment. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time.